We are live. Shit, we're live. Please, okay. please, please say hello. Hey. Um. <laughs> nice. Hello. Uh, this is Noah. Sorry. Oh, hello. This is Noah Pagan. Um, coming to you live from New York. Just kidding. This is this is like Tangleville, Missouri. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm being held captive. And hello. Sorry. I'm sorry for that. Myself. That's yeah. You're, you're alone. You didn't do anything. So no, I'm glad. I mean, not really. You're glad that you didn't do it. Okay. Anyway, I am glad I didn't Whoa. hurt you. Hello. Oh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello. I am Mitchell Matthews. Neither of us are in New York. We're both in different parts of Missouri. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Welcome to the first episode of the M and N Show, where of course the M stands for music, and the N stands for Knowledge. 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 Is that, how outdated is, how outdated does that mean? Now, you know. No meme ever dies. It's I could be cool. anyway. I'll be I'll be quoting Chocolate Rain in twenty years probably. And I was only eight when that came out. What an intro. <laughs> All right, cue the music. Just kidding. We don't, have we, don't, we don't have the budget for that. We're currently on Zoom, and we we're on the free we're on the free plan, so you can see how much desperate we are. But this is the M and N show, a show where we talk about music in all sorts of ways. And today we're going to kick it off by we we're not going to do series just because I feel like we're going to jump from idea to idea per video or per whatever. If you're tuning in audio or video, podcast or video, you're welcome. But uh, this time, uh, this was Noah's idea. We're gonna be deep diving into albums with one hit wonders on them because you know, they don't get enough love and you know, they could suck, but otherwise in this case, they're great. And today in honor of Adam Schlesinger, a great man and composer who recently passed away from COVID-19, the disease ravaging oh, our world. Absolutely. That's crazy, honestly. I know. It was, he was 52, too, and he was pretty healthy, so it was, it was definitely sad to see. But if you don't recognize that name, he is a member of Fountains of Wayne, which if you still don't recognize that, it's a power pop band famous for Stacy's mom. She's got it going on. That's a shout out to Stacy's mom. Stacy's a bitch. But her mom isn't. Her mom has me tingling in the pants. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway. Okay. So And there goes our viewership. <laughs> okay, so Stacy's mom is of course a great song. Obviously. Well made, awesome. And our viewership will stay for me. So I'm cute and bubbly. I'm wearing flamingos, but we're getting on track. Stacy's mom, the album that's on is Welcome Interstate Managers, and in honor of Adam and the band, I figured it'd be great to listen to the album itself, you know? I mean, Stacy's mom is a great song, and of course, they're thankful for their success, but, you know, I think like all bands, they want the entire work to be observed as such, so I hope you give it that chance. Now, um, so, oh, what were we going to say, sir? I was just saying, I'm familiar with the album. I can describe how I got into it later, but, it, like... Noah, did, like, how much did you know about the album or the band beforehand? Because I know that I brought this is my idea. I brought it to you. I didn't know anything. Um, I believe we even had the idea to do this since before. I thought we talked about this a little, maybe a little bit before his passing, but like, um, I wasn't aware of it really. Um, and I, I had brought it up. I. I might not have registered with you what I was saying about the bass player and composer who passed away, Adam Schlesinger. But um, I mean, so you knew nothing about it besides Stacy's mom? No, I, I didn't know anything about the band. Um, yeah, all I heard is that you said that they're that they 
had made some pretty good music besides Stacy's mom. Yes. Um, and yeah, I, I really didn't know much about the band. I did do some research. I saw, I saw that this is like their third album in their discography. Yeah. Um, the first one was way back in like 1992, I think. I, I look, I looked on Spotify. I believe it was 96. Uh, was it 96? Okay, 96. Um, but um, yeah, and this one was right smack in the in the early 2000s. Yeah, the golden age, um, if you will. Yeah. Um, but it really doesn't, in many aspects, doesn't really sound like it's from the early 2000s. Uh, it's pretty, like, if someone told me it was from the early 2000s, I believe them. But there are some aspects of it that are just really um, different from many of the common acts of that time. Um, For sure. Yeah. And also their album cover. <laughs> their album cover looks like it's... Uh, I don't know if anybody else would get this, but their album cover looks like kind of like a Rage Against the Machines to me album cover because it looks like it's trying yeah. to say something political. It's, it looks like it's trying to make some sort of broad political statement on capitalism or something. But yeah, I didn't really know much of the image or the name itself. Like, this is all a guess. Like, yeah. if you can look up the image, of course, when you listen to the album, if you do, which I hope you do. But I mean, there there are some like references some mild references to like you know wage labor and stuff like that but it doesn't really go past that i mean it just talks about like the most it talks about is basically being stuck people being stuck in dead-end jobs and like having to deal with their situations but yeah if you looked at the cover I, it looks way more serious i mean it is serious but like way more political than it actually ended up being so yeah i mean this is just a stretch like i I've never really found out what the name actually means. Welcome interstate managers. But I mean, on the cover, it's like kind of like stencil art, a little bit of graffiti influence. There's like a lot of men sitting around a round table. I think I counted, there's like 15 men you can see, I think. And there's like two that are like really cut off, but they're still there. So I think it's like 17, which there are 17 songs in the album. So like, I know each song supposed to represent a different person and like, I know one of the songs I listened to, I think was written either based on like memories or like just driving down the interstate during like a New England winter or something. So mm -hmm. I get, I don't know, maybe to me, Welcome Interstate Managers just seems like just man, like just each person driving down the interstate, reliving their own slice of life and just, I mean, they're the manager of their own life. Of course, this might be a stretch, but it's just meant to emphasize each person's point of view and what they go through. I also think um, the album kind of, I, the art kind of, it doesn't seem like it connects, but it does kind of connect because it, it connects to like, um, I don't know, like, um, like I said, like it, it, it talks about people's, situ a lot of people in this, in the album and a lot of the stories within the album are kind of like, some of them are like the situation of um, like people are stuck in yeah. some place um, for some of the songs. Um, but like, I don't know, I guess the album cover doesn't really reflect that, but it kind of like, it, it kind of reflects like, um, like, you know, like the, the picture is like, the, it seems like it's like a picture of like a bunch of CEOs. Yeah. And, like it seems like it's being ironic like oh welcome interstate managers like um you know like obviously a lot of the songs aren't about people who are in those sorts of positions so it's kind of being ironic i think yeah and there's definitely a sarcastic tone throughout the album as well so yeah it's kind of like being uh sarcastic yeah so i i think that's the way it connects and i find that kind of kind of interesting so you know <laughs> Yeah, but like, yeah, I thought this album would be fitting just given one of the members passed away. I really admire the band itself and his work, but also like, I mean, for me, I've always listened to Stacy's Mom. It truly is one of my favorite songs. I mean, it's kind of ironic, but also I think it's just, it's funny and ironic, but it's really well made too. So it stands on its own, but also, uh, yeah, I was on a trip to St. Charles, Illinois, and the person I was with was like out doing something. 
uh, some previous relationships where she was out uh, doing something for her work. And I was just in the hotel room, like just surfing albums. And I came across this one. I never really gave it a chance. Just like, oh yeah, this album. So I just remember like listening to it in like a hotel room in a random town in, in Illinois. And it's just, I was really caught up guard by how good it was. Like, you know, I was just surprised at how quality it was. So I thought it'd be a great one to tackle. But I mean, if you want me to get into the track listing. All right. Unless you, any, unless you have anything else to say. No, I don't have anything else. <laughs> You're the co-host. You should always have something in the back of your pocket. Um, yeah. Sorry. I feel bad. So, they got really aggressive. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, there are 17 songs in the album. So I just think we'll do our best to go through each one. It, isn't Elevator Up like, you, didn't you tell me that Elevator Up, though, the last song was yeah. a bonus originally? Okay, because that makes sense. When you, like, personally, when you listen to the album, we'll get into this later, but Elevator Up does not the last track does not sound like the ending. It's, it's yeah. clearly a bonus track, even though it's not listed as a bonus track. Yeah. Elevator up was like a, according to Wikipedia, of course, but it's like a bonus track in like Japan releases, but also on iTunes and Spotify. So like, it's more like a bonus track or a B side rather than supposed to be on the album, I guess. Yeah. But all right. Well, the first song we'll get into is called uh, Mexican wine. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, like, yeah, first track that's can wine. I think it's really great. I think it's one of their better known songs. But like, I'll of course try to pass it off to Noah. I I have my own thoughts. Of course, I'll dive into. But this is a majority of a first listen for Noah, so I'm curious to hear what a lot of his thoughts are. I really like this song. <laughs> um, the one I listen to. Song- <laughs> When I first I'm agreeing with song, you. Um, <laughs> I was trying to figure out what it was. Um, when I first listened to the song, I was in the shower. Yeah. This is like totally off track, but um, no, like, it's definitely on track. It hit Sexy me, beast. It, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it hit me by surprise, <laughs> and like within like two seconds, I was like singing along with it. Um, it's really good. Um. If I remember correctly, it kind of has like themes of you have like the lyrics with you. Um, yeah. But if I remember correctly, it kind of has like themes of um, sort of like just kind of the the person singing the songs kind of doesn't care and they're just trying to like um, get away from stuff. Um, but like, I don't know, it's more than that. I'm not really doing it justice. I mean, I agree with you. I mean, it's funny. It's a like, nice it, song to like, like, sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say like, it's funny because you described the album, a lot of the songs, either just a slice of life or the protagonist feeling stuck, but like, just from the lyrics, it it feels like a lot of just like, it's kind of a escapism. Man, escapism, but also like a man like accepting that a lot of things are out of his hands because like the verses are kind of like their own story of how things go, like no matter what and how, that kind of everything has a, a chain reaction so it's like things are bound to happen i think this guy's just the protagonist just accepting that but also like i think because like the chorus is like the, the sun still shines in the summertime i'll be yours if you'll be mine i tried to change but i changed my mind i think i'll have another glass of Mexican wine so like yeah of course in a sense he wants to be with this person but also i think he's just accepting that some things are out of his hands and you hope it'll go your way but it's just like sit, sitting back with a cold beverage and letting life hit you in the face, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I really, I thought it was a really good, like, the lyrics in this album are kind of, and in this song particularly are, um, they're not exactly, like, simple, but they're more simplistic um, when you compare it to some of the other lyrics on the album. Sure. But... I don't know. The feeling really comes through with the with the melody, um, which is extremely catchy, and um, there's the really great harmonies in this. Um, or there's only one harmony, but like 
I don't know. It just kind of gives this sort of like it also has like I think remember correctly there's like some like synth sort of like uh, not synth but like um some sort of like uh like digital aspect to like I'm not exactly digital. What what, what would you call it? Was it um would it be synth? I guess. I, I, yeah. Anyway, synth. I'm getting keyboard off track. synth. Was, was it synth? Yeah, keyboard synth. Okay. There's that, and it's really kind of light and kind of harpsichord sounding and um that leads it in and it's just like it's really i don't know it sends home that sort of feeling of this person's relaxed in the fact that he knows that there's a lot of things out of his control and, is, yeah i agree it's definitely a great opener i think stacy's mom well it's a great song it does kind of paint them a certain way like I mean, as I yeah, told, so like a wacky band. Yeah, like I, I mentioned this to Noah before, but I read like when the song came out, it's their first and biggest hit, obviously. And then, I mean, a lot of people thought it was Bowling for Soup, just because that the way they wrote the song yeah. is so akin to what Bowling for Soup does. So, I think just everything about this song just really like knocks, like just like when it kicks in right at the beginning, kind of just like knocks your preconceptions down. Just like yeah, so I agree. It's a great song. Yeah, yeah. I honestly I think this is one of my favorite songs on the album. Um Yeah, I'd say it's one of my top for sure. Yeah. Because we're basic boys who like it too. <laughs> and, and like the wine. <laughs> anyway. you, want, you want us a Mexican wine? <laughs> it's free. <laughs> All right. In um, in the age of streaming it's free. It used to cost money to buy songs. Of course. <laughs> Still does. Technically. They were talking about wine. I was like, wine's not free. <laughs> oh, I was saying I mean like the song it's is far free. From free. <laughs> I um, mean, if you if you buy it like I do, it's free. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Is there anything else you want to say on this one or you want to go to the next one? I think we summed it up. Um and then the song's great, and it goes uh, right into Bright Future in Sales, which this is what this is the kind of sarcastic tone I was talking about because um, it's just as powerful as Mexican wine. It's very catchy and like very just forward driving, but it's it's not. I get it's kind of, it's hopeful, but it's definitely portraying people who are stuck in there situations it, it kind of uh i don't know um tells the story of like that type of person who um who you just like it, or that i guess that feeling where you just kind of want to do anything anything like you can to get out of the yeah. situation you're on you're at and so like you you know like you lie on a resume or whatever you <laughs> you you do whatever you can to try to get out of that situation get out of the economic or whatever situation you're you're in yeah. um but it like makes light of it a little bit it's it's, it's a it's a fun song dare i say cheeky i'm not sure i don't want to use the word cheeky. you dare <laughs> like you dare there's i dare say cheeky no i'm just kidding i want your um, tongue in my cheek <laughs> don't know <laughs> This is this is a this is a. Oh, sorry. This is a, <laughs> <laughs> I was doing um, this, but it's out of camera. It's out of focus. Um. Yeah, no, it's a it's a really good song. It's it's a lot of these songs I like better than um I don't know. Stacey's mom's a great song on the album, but a lot of these songs I kind of like better than Stacey's mom. Maybe it's just because I've heard it heard Stacey's mom so many times, but a lot of them seem to have like a little bit more depth to them. And this is one of them. And even though they're trying to have like a lot of fun in this, it's really kind of has more depth. Yeah, I mean, Stacey's mom is definitely a great song, but it was, it was also like it's kind of meant for like a tribute to the Cars or like Rick Springfield, definitely the '80s. So like, yeah, a lot of these songs. I mean, I haven't heard a lot of bands in the genre similar to Fountains of Wayne, but they're more on their own. They're like a tribute. They're like their own thing. 
Like elaborate on what you said, like the course of bright future is like, I'm going to get my shit together because I can't live like this forever. You know, I've come too far and I don't want to fall. I got a new computer and a bright future in sales, which it's a great title, but also a very sarcastic phrase. It's a classic phrase just to get people to fall in line. Just, this is also just really classic. Uh, this one's really <laughs> just like really classically um, rock in, in the way it sounds. And I know that, like, to people who are listening to this and they've really only heard Stacy's mom, mm-hmm. um, you, you, people are probably like, oh, well, of course, because, you know, Stacy's mom was pretty pop punk sort of sounding, but there's a lot of variation on this album. There's a lot of, um, it kind of goes, like, there's a lot of times where it sounds more um, psychedelic. There's, like, one or two times where it sounds kind of psychedelic. There are times when it sounds folky. There's a lot of times in which it sounds folky or country sounding, uh, sure. and their instru- instrumentation, which really surprised me. And there's even a song in there that has a lot of jazz and funk, or I don't know if it's necessarily funk, but R and B influence. So yeah, it's one thing there's to be a lot of variation. And but this is one of those songs where it's just classically a rock song, but it works really well. So. Yeah, it's one thing to be just a good album on its own, but like it varies so much in sound, but also doesn't feel like it feels cohesive too. Which yeah, it does. It does. It does feel pretty cohesive. Um, yeah, I agree with that. I haven't read the lyrics just because I'm very into lyrics. I'm a songwriter myself. I'm not going to plug because I'm a good (laughs) Samaritan. But like, I I like. I'm right with you. I'm reading the lyrics too. So anyway, (laughs) I just I like to study how people write and just like get in their head and like i love reading genius which is what i'm reading right now and just like the lyrics are great they also give like annotations and stories obviously genius is the best site for that so check that out i always search for lyrics and they always come up like fifth or sixth it's just like they're, they should be the go-to site in general but like i mean i think i read like i think it was like the lead singer's brother worked at like a factory or something or like just kind of a lower wage job per se not to mm-hmm. like not to rain over those people just like compared to like someone in a band but mm-hmm. like just like like uh nitty gritty uh teeth to the bone i don't know the phrase but like just like a bunch of those philadelphia classic guys just like singing along to this because like it represents their life most like mm-hmm. fans of wayne definitely represent the uh middle class lower class just those kind of people like it, so like mm-hmm. i read it was really cool for them to say that but also it's just i think a lot of people can definitely relate to this song because no one has their shit together when they're rich a lot of people don't yeah i don't no i don't either. um but um i don't know what do you what do you uh would you say um that this song was um i don't know did it did it I'm trying to figure out what to say. Um, did it sound punky to you, or like what kind of like rock do you think it sounded? Did, did, did it sound punky to you at least? Uh, this specific song. Uh, I think Mexican Wine and this song, in terms of sound, are very similar. It's just like Mexican Wine feels very anthemic, whereas this feels like more like a sing along, pub crawl kind of thing. But I think it's pretty uh, straightforward alt rock rock like you said yeah they're just they slightly differ but like these are like they open with the best two rock songs on the album and just some of the best rock songs i've heard in a while so it was a very good start Um, to an album it's it's not um there none of the songs that sound more punk rock um like this one Mm -hmm. or sound more rocky um, Rocky, um, are <laughs> ba, 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 <laughs> um, are kind of more polished. Um, they are more like of the same genre. Of like they're more pop punky. They're more polished. They're not like um, you know older punk acts. So, um, but the whole thing, the whole project, it really works because the whole project sounds really polished. So yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that's the last thing I said. 
it's very polished but it's i think it's one of the songs that just like it's polished but you don't really notice it just because it's it's still mm-hmm. the sound the sound of it still breaks through yeah but those are the first two uh in the track list stacy's mom is after that but i feel like i mean the point of the series and there's things we're gonna do like it's been talked of enough like People obviously know how they feel about it by now, but I feel like we could just skip over that one for now. Sorry to our adoring fans for skipping over your anthem. But, yeah, I hear you. And I, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm tuning you out because this is my show. This is Noah's show. This is the M&N show. I'm getting awkward and ahead of myself. So I'm going to get... <laughs> but after, after Stacy's mom is Hackensack. Now, I'd say this will probably one of my favorites. I know you really enjoyed it. So like, yeah, talk to you. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me, boy. <laughs> talk to me, you sexy number. <laughs> um, I would say uh, Hackensack might be my favorite song on the album. Maybe, um, was it Hey, hey Julie? Yeah, those um, are my two favorite. But we'll get to that. Hey, Julie. We'll, hey get, Julie to that. we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, you're spoiled. Hackensack. <laughs> um, Hackensack is basically a story about a guy who, um, who, le- uh, who is still in the same town, small town, named Hackensack. Um, it's a town in New Jersey. That, yeah, town in New Jersey. Um, that he's been all of his life. Um, yeah. And he's sort of writing it. It's kind. It's kind of. Kind of reminds me of Hey There Delilah, except Hey There Delilah. I think the guy has actually left. I don't know. Yeah, he left to LA or whatever. Yeah. It's of that same sort of feeling. Um, and basically, he's talking about, you know, if you ever come back from, I think, um, I forgot exactly where, where she was at, but like, she, uh, she's you know, in LA. She, LA. Probably yeah, that's LA. that's the reason why it reminded me of um of that song. Yeah, if she if she ever comes back from L.A., then he'll be waiting for her in Hackensack. I mean, and it was like when I tell you this song hit me hard. <laughs> Just kidding, I didn't cry, but <laughs> I felt it was it was it's a good song. It's like it's a uh, I was really surprised. Um. What's funny to me? I've always loved the song, but like I revisited the album again just to prepare for this, and like the guitar work on the song is immaculate. Like it sounds amazing. But I I reread the lyrics again, and like I get what you're saying about Hey There Delilah. I think the difference between them lies in lyrics, because like Hey There Delilah is obviously like a long distance love song, even though like one actually side note for Hey There Delilah, which it's kind of another one hit wonder, but they have a few hits under their belt as well. But like that song, he, that was like, the, yeah, the girl he was writing about, they weren't even together. Like he just like, yeah, no, love with her, had a it was like, it was like, like, it was just like imag- it was imagining. Yeah. yeah. It was, yeah. It was imagining a life they could have. But like rewriting this song, it's like, I, it's not even like, this feels more like a longing, like a daydream. Cause like, at least to me, like, it doesn't seem like they really knew each other or they're together. Like, yeah, it, it seems more like, more like he just rich. notices how far she's come in her own life. And like, he vaguely knew her and like either wishes he could have been closer to her or just wishes for that kind of life. But like, yeah, just like, just like an, uh, not necessarily unrequited, just like a love that was never admitted maybe. Yeah. And it didn't even seem like the person like, it was like a person who he remembered. Um, yeah, like it, was just, it was just like it kind of also to... reminds me of God. I'm, I'm I'm drawing a lot of like, you know, um, uh, what's it called? Um, associations with other songs in this song. Um, to, what's that Green Day song? Um, Time of your life. What's her What's her name? Oh, you know that song. Ameri- what's her name for American Idiot? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds Fuck, me of like, that. That's one of my favorite songs. It's a great song. Yeah, from, um, from them, like I'm more. I can say, uh, yeah. It reminds me of that song. Does it? Does, does that remind you of of what's her name? 
I'd say like in terms of lyrics, kind, it's... kind of like it, it sonically, like instrumentally, it definitely has the same kind of power and depth and like hits you hard. I think. I think it's for that, it's kind of folky and acoustic, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's very it's simple yet powerful. Like in terms of lyrics, I think that sounds more like he's writing about someone he used to date and love, and they're just like it's similar to me. Like I'm my first relationship ended like now like four years ago i think so like obviously i still remember them like they're a big part of my life it's just like those emotions those times will always be with you but like the person itself slips away as you like it's more go into your own life but like i get what you're mm. saying sonically it's very similar i do agree with there that is one of my favorite green day songs for sure yeah great song but um no i it, it does it's um it's similar to to a lot of those types of songs that we mentioned. Um, it's it, it it is like the the melody and everything like that, like all everything that they do in this um, in their songwriting is actually pretty unique, though, um, and how they set it up. Um, uh, I, I think it's so secretly it's, really even whenever it's not. Sorry, what were you say? I was just saying, I, I just thought of this. I think Hack and Sack is a song. It's kind of secretly depressing. It's like on the surface, it seems like a love song, but also it's like, it's pretty clear they it's never a, really, it's never really met. I feel like he's saying, I will wait for you as long as, as long as I need to. If you ever make it back to Hack and Sack, I'll be there for you. I think that's just like recognizing like how different their lives are, how much his life really hasn't progressed. So it's like, he's trying to give himself a purpose or like trying to like, I don't know, like explain or like, I don't, I forget. I don't know the exact word. Just like he's trying to give himself a reason to be there when really he doesn't really have a reason to still be in his hometown, I guess. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. it's pretty sad. And like, if you read further to me, but what were you yeah, going to say? Also the, well, I was just going to say like the, melodies and like the melody and like um the simple there's really no like complex harmonies but like the harmony with this um really kind of it's a lot of the the choices um sonically that they make in this album are are very kind of um um what's the word um like i'm trying to think no, it, it they kind of like. There's a lot of build up. I yes. guess I, I should say yes. there's a lot of build up, um, and they they really structure their songs pretty well. Very to like yeah. have you like anticipate that build up, um, and this is one of those songs where they, it's just, it's so perfect in how they writ, wrote it, um, and that's part of the reason why I like it so much, but like just the way they set up the melody and the harmony and the instru- instrumentation on this is just it's perfect. It's it really, it's really good. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I definitely, but I'd I, say I this is like, I have to say on that. I'd say it's, I could say it's one of my favorite. It's probably my favorite on there as well. Just like objectively, it's the, I think the best song on there. Yeah. And also, you know, it's funny. I, <laughs> It's, it, it, this song reminds me of so many different songs sonically, but also like, I mean, like in terms of theme, but also sonically because um, <laughs> whenever he, the the song goes, um, if you ever mm-hmm, to hack and sack, for some reason that reminded me of um, uh, from uh, shit. Um, what is that? Uh, Buddy, Buddy Holly, Buddy Holly. Oh. Wait, do that again? Just remind me. Like the chorus. Yeah, just the. Hello, just Holly. No, not the chorus. Yeah, the thing that leads up, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, that 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 part. I do love Weezer, so I I can't. Weezer's definitely very similar. Well, what's funny is like, I I think I get, I get what you're saying. Buddy Holly is not a song I listen to a lot. I think it's the one I listen to the least actually on that album. Oh, that's the reason why you didn't know it. I was like, why do you not get 
at Buddy Holly. But also, like, the cars are – do you know who the cars are? Yeah. Okay, well, the cars – I'm not, like, super familiar, but I, I, know, I know who they, they are. Yeah. They're, they're, very, uh, they're a very famous power pop band, and, like, Stacy's mom was definitely emulating the cars, but also, like – they're very power pop, similar to the Cars, but also like uh, the Blue Album, which Buddy Holly was on, was produced by the lead singer of the Cars as well. Really? Yeah, like he produced three of their albums, like the Green Album, the Blue Album, and uh, I think Everything Will Be All Right in the End. That's really interesting. Yeah, okay. I wonder if that, that has some sort of like connection. Um, but Maybe. no, it did actually, rem- it reminded me a little bit of Weezer. In the in the way the melody was set up, um, yeah, I don't know. This song reminds me of a lot of different things. I don't think that's the reason why I like it so much. I think the reason why is just I think it's a really well written song. Yeah. Um, but may, maybe there is some nostalgia in there. Maybe there's some of that. But like, it really it doesn't really sound. It sounds unique. Yet it does like draw a lot of similarities between different songs in terms of theme and uh, yeah. somewhat in terms of sound definitely i think we've uh, talked that song to death is it's truly yeah an amazing song so please check it out hack and sack it's the song right after stacy's mom but uh next song will be no better place i mean do you have any big notes on no better place <laughs> <laughs> that sounded condescending i didn't mean to at all i can't, I can't tell whether or not i, 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 I throw it back to you just because like this is your first time hearing it, so I'm definitely interested in what you think. This, of it. this isn't a bad song, but I was also put off by the. God, I don't want to Yeah. Bye. <laughs> you did it, okay. There's a repeated Bye. guitar F- echo effect throughout the song. I think. Bye. Was it really a guitar thing? Because I thought it was like I an electronic effect that someone was just pushing, pushing a button over and over again. Um, I, I feel like it was like a guitar echo. I think I think it was. Um, there are oh. things in which they use a lot of distortion and um, kind of reminds yes. me of um, um, shit. God, I have to look up that band again. But so you um, it reminds me of another band. Shit, one second. Like, can I? Can I? For sure. I, please I, I will fill look, the void. look this up. I, I will yeah, fill the void. You uh, you talk about what, but while I'm looking up this band, okay. No better place is the fifth song on the album, and obviously it's a guitar hook. <laughs> but also, um, I mean, going through the lyrics, it feels like um, it feels like it, it's definitely like two people who either are in love, they're in the tail end of their relationship, breaking up. They're they obviously mean a lot to each other, but also it's like. They, they both seem to be very lost in life because uh, the chorus is, and now you're leaving New York for no better place, which it's not explicitly stated. I feel like that feels like okay. someone who doesn't know what they're doing with their life. So they're like living off of yeah. impulse or just what they think will be best when really they don't really have a plan. They're just starting over exactly what they're doing right now in, in another place. Yeah. But also the ending was like... Um, Uh, yeah, the bourbon sits inside me right now. I'm a puppet in its sway, and it may be the whiskey talking, but the whiskey says I miss you every day. So I, I taxi to, that. That's the last. So it's like, so I taxi to an online party, park me in the corner in an old chair, sit my drink, and stare out into space. So it's definitely like they both have nowhere to go, but like now this guy is truly alone in how he feels if she leaves. Reminds me of my bloody Valentine. That's the man I was looking at. Um, I thought you were about to say, about to say reminds me of my relationship. <laughs> no, 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 no. I love Destiny. Sorry. No. Um, Shout out to Destiny. <laughs> what is it you just said? Because I was so much on track. Uh, what was it you just said? I'm sorry. About Destiny? <laughs> no, no, no. About the, about the theme and everything. I was just saying, as it goes on, I think it's just they're both lost in life, but I think he's just angry or bitter that she's leaving or like she doesn't know what she's doing and she's just like living off an impulse, but also like also if she leaves, then he'll just feel the same way, but he'll be alone. 
So like they're she's going to no better place, and he's in no better place than she is. Is what I got from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. I pause for effect. I don't know how I'm going to connect this, but <laughs> pause for effect. The only thought I can have on this song, and I guess I'm just like so much more interested in this, like the way that everything just sounds. Yeah. I, I should be probably I should probably think more about the lyrics, and I, I do try to, but. I'm just I'm obsessed everything. with songwriting, so that's why I keep bringing it yeah. back. Um, it reminds me a bit of my bloody Valentine. Um, yeah. And um, God, it it's just the distortion, that like heavy distortion in the guitar, and how much it just kind of hits you. <laughs> um, because so many of their songs on um, so many of their their songs are like that um there's a, a few other songs on this album that kind of sound like my bloody valentine i would i would want to know whether or not they actually listened or were fans of uh my bloody valentine because um yeah some of these songs actually have a lot of similarities um in terms of it yeah and some of their distortion uh, have you heard my bloody valentine have you, have you heard of them uh i haven't I know they're a big 80s, 90s band. They're like, things were probably the most famous shoegaze band. My friend listens to them a lot, so I'm hoping to learn more. But like, you might they're be awesome. onto something. Like, I could be off on this, but like, I know that on one of the later tracks, they, uh, one of the guys, one of the extra guys on guitar, like, Outside Help was like the guitarist from the Smashing Pumpkins. And I know uh, they were in that era with the My Bloody Valentine. So there mm-hmm. might, be, might be some connection. I'm not. I don't know a lot yeah, about either band, of, so I'm not for sure. Yeah. It did remind me of uh, the their album Loveless. Um, and yeah. it's very possible that they, they actually listened to that song quite a bit, because that, that was back in 1990s, yeah. early 1990s. They could have, but, you know, I would like to, I would think that'd be an interesting to, thing to research more or see if that, that was actually an influence for them, because in this song and many other songs, there's a like a heavy use of distortion and like playing with um you know stretching the capabilities of guitar like and how it can sound and how you, it can be used so yeah it's, it's a wide influence so i wouldn't be surprised so i, I get where you're coming from no but it, it does kind of complement that that sound kind of what i was going to say before whenever i got off track sure. um it just kind of complement that sound of like aimlessness. Oh um, yeah, like a drone. Because it just sounds like it's go. Yeah, it just sounds like it's going nowhere. And so I, I, I really, even though that sound, <laughs> it's one of those songs where I heard it at first. I was like, this sounds really wacky. Um, but I think it works. I think it does work actually. Um, you just want you have to listen to it again to really get it. You know. <laughs> yeah. I'll definitely look into them more because I just, I don't know near basically anything about them to like, compliment what you're saying. Unfortunately, yeah. Man, I highly recommend them. All right, yeah. I guess the next track, right? I guess so. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, uh, no better place. And the next song is Guy Winter song. It turns sound they're very different. Guy Winter's song is very soothing acoustic. I think it's one of my favorites as well. It's well, the drums drums really reminded me of country like country instrumentation, like classic country instrumentation. But that's yeah. what the drums sounded like to me. I don't really know how to like explain it, but it's it was very minimalistic sort of um, setup in terms of how the drums sounded on that song. I don't know. Um, the, I don't know the technical name, but I've seen them perform them. They just use these things with like the yeah, many. Yeah. Thing. They use those, so like, I don't know what they're called. Uh, some, gonna, someone's gonna like. Someone's gonna trash us. There's gonna be some drummer who's, who's watching this video. Or the, like, just a gif of me doing this. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. You know, right? <laughs> um. What'd you but, think? I love this song. I thought it was a great song. Um, I really thought that um, the use of um, bells. Uh, was a great way of conveying, you know, like the theme of winter in this. Um, I thought it was a really cutesy song. Um, 
Yeah, I think it, like um, it's kind of like you know, it's it's like a it's a nice little. If I remember correctly, it was like a love song, wasn't it? Yes, uh, I th- I think the lead singer. I know he wrote it. He might have grown up in New around or in New England. I can't say for sure, but mm-hmm. like, I mean, New England in the winter can be. A pre- I think a lot of people listen to winter is definitely a key theme that kind of exemplifies depression or isolation or loneliness. Yeah. But like, I think it's just like a love song, but also a re-encouraging song to like to someone who loves that she'll be able to make it through. Like yeah, make it through. Like the summer will be here soon. Your daddy told you when you were a girl, the kind of things come to those who wait. So just the snow's coming down in New England town. It's falling all day long. What else is new? What could I do? I wrote a Valley Winter song to play for you. So it's definitely a love song. Very encouraging to get through these times of darkness, isolation, depression. Kind of spices it on there. It's not winter, but that's, that's not, that all sounds too real. It uses um, depression for... <laughs> Depression is not like state. It's not explicitly stated, but like it's like peppered on there for zest. It's, it's yeah. like a dash of depression. It's a very sad zest. <laughs> it's too real. Um, yeah. Um, let's not get into the mental states of of the hosts, but you know, both of the hosts. I'm just hiding it well. That's what it, I was taught it's to do. A, <laughs> it's a good like underline there's like a, i could i could sense an undertone of um of like sort of implying that the person that he's writing to is, has a, has some problems you know in terms of like they're you know dealing with things um yeah i could i could definitely see that um i thought that um I thought it was nice though because it it still sounded like it didn't sound depressing though it didn't sound sad it sounded really encouraging it sounded really oh yeah for sure it it was really nice because also it kind of good to set up a like kind of it's one of those songs you hear and it sets up a scene in your mind didn't sound Christmassy um it's kind of surprising it didn't sound Christmassy with the bells um, I didn't really notice the bells too much, actually. You didn't. Yeah. You didn't notice it. There's a constant like shaking of bells. That sh- 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 um, yeah, I, I listen really to it all subtle. the time. I didn't really notice it. It's cool. You, you, yeah, it, it, it's it 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 sets up that whole theme of like it being in winter, and I thought that was really a nice touch. Um, it's minimalistic, per, per, like in terms of percussion, and it is it it doesn't sound like a country song, but in many ways the drum, like I said, the drumming. And percussion is kind of like classic country music. Um, this is more, I think, truly like a folk sounding type of song. Um, but yeah, and it doesn't really sound like a quote unquote pop punk band either. So I mean, like yeah, a punky, yeah. because they seem to all sound like a normal, like kind of punky kind of. Um, kind of a punk homage to punk homage <laughs> welcome to the stage punk homage uh, sorry welcome back uh, to the sort of punk like homage a... <laughs> starring noah mitchell it's <laughs> sort of like a punk homage to like 80s or like you know like music about like you know girls and stuff like that i mean I truly know. i think all these songs could be different bands like but they tie yeah. it, they tie it together very cohesively like it doesn't feel yeah. out of place which is hard and, to do. And, and there are multiple. I, God, it sounds like I, I'm, I'm like I'm not good at like listening, but like aren't there like multiple singers on this song or on this album? I mean, uh, I mean, there's a main lead singer and then the bass player and Adam Slusher, who I mentioned yeah. frequently. He uh, he always did the backing vocals. Okay. Um, some songs. I hear more of a rough like singing um, and and some of the songs I, I hear the voice who does like Stacy's mom and stuff like that. Do you know if, if there's like a different person for each? I, I should probably research that, but like, Pre, like do you know? Main, main singer? If it's mean? just, yeah, if it, is it the same singer? 
singing for yeah, like both uh, the rough for like all the songs on there uh chris collingwood is the lead singer he plays guitar as well or rhythm guitar acoustic guitar mm-hmm. so he's always the lead singer from like i I don't think they've done any songs where he wasn't the lead singer. It's just how I, I, I really hope always doing backing. Okay, I hope I'm not looking stupid. You know. Oh no, like, you're not. You I know. I get it. Yeah, but like, he can change his voice really well to like being. Yeah, he suits really a lot of things really well. Too. Yeah, he has a really versatile voice. I mean, he can make it really pretty soft and sound a little bit like. It sounds weird. Reminds me of um, God, you know Phineas and Ferb. Yeah. Okay. I didn't yeah, watch this I, I, Yeah, I know Phineas and Ferb. Okay. I grew I up. I was a child once. I wasn't a Disney kid, so um, forgive me. Well, who is the one? Who is the one with the triangle face? It's Phineas. Okay. Some of the times he reminds me of Phineas and his voice, but then other times <laughs> it just sounds like a. To- yeah, I'm not even kidding. You think Chris um, Collingwood found a way? It sounds like Phineas. <laughs> Well, we'll go back and listen to some of these songs. And <laughs> I haven't like, heard. I, I honestly, the only thing I remember I singing wise from Phineas and Ferb was Bowling for Soup. And like, dude, we got the band back together because they did everything. They did all kinds of songs. And Phineas and Ferb, bowling, bowl, it was like partially all, Bowling musical. for Soup was the main <laughs> music. So that's what I remember. Not Phineas. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Clearly, that kind of makes a lot of sense. I mean, there's a, anyway. Um, the. the <laughs> <laughs> his voice can it can sound like Phineas, but like in a good way, like in a way that's like ah, it's nice. This is like sort of tiny, soothing voice. Um, but I will like, agree with you. Uh, it's just funny. Like I don't mean to sound like an idiot, but like he sounds like Phineas from Phineas <laughs> and Ferb. <laughs> you know the show. Yeah. All right. God. <laughs> just razzing you. He has a pretty versatile voice yes. um and this this, this song um is pretty pretty nice and smooth i like it i like it a lot nice and smooth like phineas's nose just straight <laughs> just down yeah yeah i'm sorry this show is great or i the, don't mean to or bash the, or the back of, or the back of ferb's head oh so you know That's who ferb nice. is Yes. <laughs> I told you, fit, we're getting off track. He's a semi-aquatic. He, he can have a of action. Ah! Sorry. Oh, yeah, watch, okay. watch, watch Anth Poe running around like Perry the Platypus at his old high school. Classic YouTube. Classic video. I just sent you that video. I don't even know what you're talking about. Like that YouTuber I sent you did that cool graduation speech that you liked. He made videos where he's like dressing up as Ben 10 or Perry the Platypus at yep. high school okay, running yep. around. Yep, yep, yep. I know what you're talking about. Yep, that guy's, right. that guy's right. cool. You know, you know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he's, he's a quality. He's a quality um, he's man. Really... I wish I could meet him. Please. Tag him. <laughs> Tag Anthony in the comments. He'll find us. Yeah, uh, yes. He'll skip all the way through to find his yeah, name. Yeah, to, to find his name. Um, because we're famous. I'd skip through to find your name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, great song. Next song. <laughs> all Kinds of Time. Also, to be clear, like we're touching on all of these. We won't touch on everyone. Mostly towards the end. But like, all these songs are quality. So I want to give you that deep dive, that deep dumpster dive, that deep dumpster homeless guy dive who's looking for a slice of bread that's also moldy because it's been sitting there for three days because the the bitch Karen at uh, Schnooks thought it'd be doing her job. <laughs> all kinds of time. Noah? I got all kinds of time to, to, to talk about this. Anyway. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you fucking nailed um, it, Noah. I know. Um, All kinds of time. This is a good. This is a good song. Um, <laughs> let's start it. This is this is a good song. <laughs> let's go. Like, we're, oh, we're done. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, this one was kind of cool because um, it kind of like takes you to a moment um, yes. and pauses it. Um, and then like the the within the person's head, like it's a football player on a field, and he's like, I remember correctly, he's a quarterback. Yes. And a high school football player, and um, high school or professional during I guess. during this like. If I remember correctly, he was um, sort of thinking about like his life after this, and um, the song kind of talks about how like it doesn't really say this explicitly, but it's like the the this there are times in that song where it goes out of his perspective, and then goes like you know talking about how he's got all he's got all kinds of time. That's like the chorus. Um, it kind of sounds like maybe I'm reading too much into it, but like it almost sounds like, um, like the narrator or whoever. Kind yeah, of so say, it's it's is, like the commentator is singing a song. Yeah, it is. Um, it, it's like kind of sounds like he's like sort of uh, envious of that. Like not exactly envious, but like they they um not like. Because envious has like negative connotations, but like he really wants that. Um, I thought it was really pretty beautiful. Um, really, it's pretty well written. Um, I would have liked. Uh, I mean, I guess if I had to like give a critique of it, I would have liked it to have like a little bit more. Um, I think it was, I thought it was a good good length. But like, I, I would have liked it to go more in depth, and like what the football player was thinking or something. I, 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 I that and like also like it doesn't it gives you like a snapshot in time. It doesn't. I don't know if it necessarily goes anywhere. I don't know if like everybody would really like that. But I don't know. It, 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 I thought it was kind of nice. Uh, I thought it was pretty nice. Otherwise. I did wish it was a little bit like had a little bit more to it. I mean, I'm ne- I never played football myself. Obviously, I gotta save this body for when it really needs it. <laughs> I've okay. I've played. I re- I ran cross country. That was the only sport I did in high school, and I've had a lot of moments where it's like. I didn't. I didn't know. Still now, it's like the commentators singing about the guy as they're playing the mm. game. It's like the last few minutes of the game, I'd say. But it's like a lot of times. It's like I think like the best moments are like the most rewarding moments. Either like I think you know everything's going to go your way. I think best example I can give is like I think the last cross country race I ran, which was like about four and a half years ago, almost. I I was like I was like running down the final stretch and I could see that I was like a minute above my personal record so no matter what I was going to beat my personal record so like it feels like the song does a really good time it feels like time is slowing down it's just like when the best things are happening the most rewarding things moments like that it's just like time slows down everything is working you are Life has a bad habit of going by really fast, but like these specific moments, it's like the world is yours all the mm-hmm. time and the world is yep. yours. Everything is at your disposal. So it's like, I've definitely had these kinds of moments where it's like, no one has forever. No one has it all the time in the world. But like, those are the moments where you can really like, wow, this is really happening. Yeah. Um, it kind of made me think about, um, I never did really any sports per se, but I did, um, Trap. I did do trap team. You did trap yeah. music for a sport? You dog. I was in a badass high school. I mean, I mean, let me. Badass Missouri sure. High School, I guess. Dude, badass man. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Fuck. No, like trap shooting and. What does that mean? Shooting clay pigeons. Okay. It's um. Those discs. Yeah. You, yeah, the discs. That's what they're called, clay pigeons. I was pretty good. I was all right. Um, you know, sounds like a very, very country sport. I, I, I understand that. 
Um, I did that up until like my sophomore year, but also it kind of, this kind of reminded me of like those times when I was doing that, something like that or doing um, choir, which I did was way more involved in. Um, yeah. And it reminded me of like how I'd never really thought <laughs> past that moment. But like, if I were to look back, like, shit, I, I, I would tell myself, I, I almost feel like he's singing towards himself. Um, you know, like you've got so much time and you need to slow down. Uh, that's what it kind of feels like. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I like this song. Um, yes, it, does it really go anywhere? It doesn't really. But it's really nice in terms of conveying that feeling of wanting to go back and, like, say, hey, it's you've got a lot more ahead of you. So just you know enjoy everything right now sort of thing interesting i didn't go from that angle it it i definitely agree it does really capture a moment in time really well yeah it it, it sounds like thinking back it almost sounds like the person singing is that is the football player but maybe in the future looking back in that moment so interesting. yeah well, thank you for your tech. <laughs> but yeah, that was all kinds of time. Moving on from there, we have a uh, little red light. What do you remember about this song, though? Sorry. I think this, was, this one was pretty wacky. Pretty um, wacky? It was pretty wacky. <laughs> I mean, to, just to set the scene, it's like um, a man who's just broken up with, and it's like obsessing over being called back or the situation fixing itself, but also being like stuck in mindless situations like meetings or traffic where it's like, you can't think of anything else besides that. So you're just like driving yourself insane. Yeah. And then I guess it does kind of convey that feeling. Um, also it, the song can be really dated um, <laughs> in terms of lyrics. I thought those, it was kind of funny in that sense. Um, when he was yes, talking about it, the, little, the little red light refers to his cordless Japanese telephone. Also, the as big he puts it. Also, the big black Radio Shack digital portable phone. That's the, yeah, that's it. That's Which is the, the most big black. This, this is the most, most drawn out way to represent your cell phone. <laughs> but it works. Yeah, but like, I feel like that's the way people viewed them back also, then, too. Also, the uh, desktop mailbox of my big black laptop. I do not yeah, use no. the mail. I do not use mail. I do not use the mail app on my laptop. The like the pre the, the pre given mailbox. Well, I assume that means email if it's on your laptop. Yeah, yeah, but like oh, I'm sorry, I'm, saying, like, sorry. I'm, I'm stretching too far. He said it very much like a. He said it very boomer boomery. <laughs> it's like the that, mailbox. That little right, that little red light's not blinking on the desktop mailbox of my big black laptop. Okay, sorry. Um, I I I thought that this was a fun song, but maybe I should have listened to it a little bit more extensively than I did. But like, upon re it's definitely. Great. I think the good. It's a good song. I I don't. I don't know how. Maybe if this is me. Okay. I don't think it amounts to the same amount of like quality or like I don't know as, as the ones a little bit before that or, or before it. I mean, when um, I first listened to it, I, I liked it, but it wasn't like it wasn't like sticking with me. It's just like, yeah, this was good. Yeah, but, like kind of the way I felt. I was just like, like sorry, what were you say? I was saying like I'm first listening to objectively good, but not like it wasn't like something I came back to a lot, but like re-listening to it, I think it is a really good fun song and it has the I, guitarist I, from Smashing Pumpkins, which is cool. Really? Yeah. James Eha. It was cool. 
He was playing that. <laughs> great, great impression. It I just it just says he played guitar on it, so probably the main melody. That that is what I thought was wacky about the song. It was the guitar. So wacky. <laughs> Sitting in traffic on the tapping Z, 50 million people out in front of me. Oh, Jesus. Um, (laughs) Yeah, stop there. That's about all I know I can say about that song. Fair enough. We will move on (laughs) to probably my favorite, like, subjectively favorite. Hey, Julie. Hey, Julie was a great song. I, I I think this is either my favorite or my second favorite song it's on the second, album. It's their second most popular song in general. Really, I actually did not know that. Yeah, Stacey's mom is like 180 million plays on Spotify, of course, but Hey Julie is like 12 million. So it's it's, cracking, a, it's a bigger margin, but like, it is their second most popular song. Cracking out my phone for this one. All right, um, fine. Like don't, I have to don't, re-look, don't come prepared. Gotta relook at these lyrics because. Um, I like this song a lot. It's the catchiest um, song. It has a great little keyboard line on the chorus, and like, it's it's really sweet without being sappy, and it's just like, it's, bit, it's the, one of the biggest earworms I've heard in a long time. And like, I've tried to play it on ukulele before. I want to learn that for sure in the future. But I mean, I can't say enough good things about. It. I love it. I'm just wishing you were with that person that you love so much. Yeah. Um. Especially when your manager and job is shit. Yeah. Um, This is like sort of that whole feeling of like, you know, stuck at, you know, doing wage labor and like being basically a a working like nothing, you know, for this, you're feeling like nothing for, you know, under like a boss that you hate. Um, and only thinking about that like person you want to get back to. I, I think it's a really just innocent. It's a great innocent song, but like, it escapes me. Like, was the instrumentation more acoustic? If I remember correctly, on this, I could, I could. Yeah, not. it was acoustic based. It was really it, what it reminded me was. It kind of yeah. Now I think about it. It reminded me of Simon Simon and Garfunkel. Did um, I think it reminded me a little bit of Cecilia, but maybe that's a little bit left field. Um, it was that kind of like nice. A little bit, yeah. yeah, it's a little I, left it, field. I mean, yeah, but the reason why is because it kind of like had that cutesy feeling of like um, of like you know just singing a simple song about like a girl you want to see and i know cecilia is not really about that but it's it's it's, it is it's kind of like a simple song about about a girl um funny because i did spend a lot of time trying to learn cecilia and hey julie on the ukulele coincidentally (laughs) really yeah Um, not because they're similar but like those are two songs i try to work in they this well for whatever whatever reason this 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 song reminded me of simon garfunkel um, cool. in a good, in a really good way. Um, yeah, I, I, I really, I gotta say this, th- this song is like really great in terms of writing. It's one of their strongest in terms of like writing and in terms of lyrics. <sighs> it's just like perfect. It's a perfect, it's not like perfect, but like, it's I great. Think it's, it's an awesome song. I think it's like 10 out of 10 for me. Like, yeah, I, I would say, yeah. I guess I would say it's like 10 out of 10. Maybe it's a little much for some people Maybe if they, they wouldn't listen to this song, but I, I think it's a great song. I think it's I mean, awesome. Song. I think Hackensack is more like, based on the sound, emotional way, like it hits you. But like, Hackensack is a little bit of an opposite to this song. Like that, that's objectively the best because it hits you really hard, but like this song is just like, it's simple, but it's really well made. And you know, a lot of times simple is the most effective. Mm. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, um, it's nice that they had this on the on the album where they had it, 
because a lot of these songs are really depressing, and this does have some like really depressing yeah. undertones, I guess. Um, yeah, hey, Julie and Stacy's mom are definitely like very happy. They're they're happy, but like they have like Hey Julie has a little bit of like, this like sad undertone because it's like um, stuck at this job and everything like that. But like it, it's a sadness that like you know is gonna. It's like something like um, it's upsetting that he's he's at this job sort of thing. But like See, it's a yeah, happy it's, song overall. Yeah, it just it's like a lot of the songs like reading lyrics again do have sad undertones. This feels just more like like working is tedious. I'd rather be with you. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I I agree there. It's definitely the happiest I think. Um, but like, I, I I think that the song is really interesting in that fact that it's kind of like the complete opposite of Hackensack because it's like, um, working working and being where he's at is so tedious. I'd rather be with you, but like he can't. Yeah. And then Hey Julie is like the opposite. It's like kind of like the fantasy. It's like. So, geez, I, I'd rather be with you, but it's true. You know, he's with that person. Oh, okay, yeah. It's like the fulfilling of that. I like yeah, that. Two that different really set, cool. two different versions of longing. Yeah. Definitely. All right, then we move on to. Uh, I guess this song is really interesting to you, Haley's Waitress. Which actually, uh, that's the next song on the trip, uh, but also like. Haley is also based on like Haley's Comet as well. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Like I read the background of it. It was more like just like they're on tour and just Adam Schlesinger being impatient with the service compared to like New York, but also like tying it back to like how Haley's Comet only comes around once in a while. So it's just kind of a snarky, petty kind of look at like his service in yeah. like smaller cities, I guess. Um. I liked how like this song was sort of did a dual story situation, and there's one story of the guy like waiting for Haley, the waitress, to to bring his check or like bring the food or, or bring coffee I, I guess, at first, and then bring the check, and and then Haley's like uh, Haley's waitress. I didn't give the name of the waitress, but Haley's waitress. Um, she or yeah, it was a she, right? <laughs> yeah, waitress. Uh, duh. Um, anyway, sorry. Um, she uh, she had like a lot more going on. She had like a lot of bigger plans. Um, from remember correctly, uh, what didn't they mention like auditions or? Uh, the second verse is like Haley's Hollywood waitress stuff. has vanished once again. She's talking to her agent. She's calling all her friends. Forget about the coffee. I'll just take a check. Haley's waitress. You know you'll get yours yet. This, this, this reminds me of a little bit of like um, of a uh, kind of like, I don't remind me of La La Land a little bit, but like because you know she's like a waitress, she's trying to get get out of that situation. She's not really focused on being where she's at. Um, it's funny. It's just like based on the sound, like it it evokes it evokes a lot of emotion. Not necessarily like I relate. Just like there's a lot of palpable emotion in it, but also like reading the backstory it just seems like a really petty snarky song just like based on the story just dolled up in a certain way i also kind of puts in perspective like people like how petty people can be and like impatient people can be whenever other people have, have like you don't realize that other people have like their own things going on you don't really realize that other people have um big things that they want to accomplish and this isn't exactly their what they want to do so yeah. i mean I, yeah i i thought that was kind of i thought that was kind of cool that it does that um oh god the jazz the the chords like we have to talk about the chords in this this song the jazz chords are fucking awesome um it's a great like use of piano in this. Um, I remember, I love I love the bass in this. Yeah. The bass is kind of kind of R and B soul. The chords within it are jazzy. 
is is very good. Um, I, my only like gripe with this is like maybe like I really wish they kind of cut out the whole like the the whole um the scratching of the guitar. You know, like how how they how how uh it's it's kind of used for like that sort of like sexy sound on the guitar yeah. if that makes any sense I, I get what you're saying i'll take your yeah. word for it yeah god i can't i can't i can't make the sound with my mouth but I mean, the certain jazz chords, i really i kind of i wish they didn't put that in there because it didn't really fit yeah but um other than that i really like this song um yeah i, mean, the way I think it might be my third favorite yeah nice. uh i think it's just some of the jazz chords like Maybe Sierra Gondry show. I'm not sure. Just like when they do, like we'll be right back, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like those certain, like in those like '80s shows, or like maybe even Eric Gondry. I can't, I can't recall. Just like those, those like it's definitely '80s jazz. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I, it's like it's it's bothering me. Like I, I I'm trying. I know what to say, but I can't really think of it. Mm. But um, what like kind of like the old old. Uh late night show jazz yeah <laughs> is what you're trying yes. to say. It, I, like it might have been eric andre i don't know shout out to eric andre we know you're watching of all the things you you, you discuss is eric andre um, hey i'm you're a man of the show. jazz i'm a man of the, of uh, eric andre <laughs> eric, eric andre feature me <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, that's um, def it's definitely underrated. It's a hidden gem. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it really showcases their. I don't know who. Who really like set up the chords and all like the how every like the instrumentation and how much I think Adam Slash is a the composer. Like I know a lot of, he was, I, I, I think mean, of, is he is he made that. Sorry, what were you say? I was just saying I, I read about the band. I think a lot of their songs are like Chris and Adam would write something and then bring it to the rest of the people to like arrange it fully. But I think Adam Schlesinger in general is a great composer, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if he handled a lot of it. I didn't say for like certain, but like, like I think all okay. kinds of time was definitely all him. So like, yeah, it, been. it was really well composed. Posed. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I thought that I, it blew my mind how uh, I don't know, like how not like Stacy's mom it sounded. Yeah, <laughs> like it blew my mind that this was the same band in the that's, same album. That's so. basically me just listening to this entire album. Yeah, yeah. But like, that's a great song, and then. Right after that, we got Hung Up On You, which is a classic saloon song. I'd say. Ah, yeah, that was, that was their uh, country that country song. On their <laughs> Full-on country saloon sliding it was a very, pedal, pedal yes. string guitar, full-on. Yeah, um, sliding guitar and everything. I love this song. I thought this was, was this a cover? Do you know if this no, was a they cover? No, they wrote it. They wrote it. They wrote this. That's really cool. Um, It kind of reminded me of. I I keep on drawing conclusions of what this, this remind me of, but like yeah. kind of reminded me of the Beatles with uh, Rocky Raccoon a little bit, a little bit of that like you know they're not they're not from the country world, but they're they're making an honest attempt at country and I, they did Ringo really Star well. I thought Ringo Starr is a big country guy, so I'm sure he oversaw a lot of yeah. those country changed. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, who, the, the people, some uh, common theme I've seen with this album um, is a little bit of country influence on it. Who have someone in there uh, was really, I don't know, a fan of old country, it sounds. Old uh, country and Western, as I used to call it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's what it sounds like. I'm not the biggest country fan. Like I definitely appreciate and like old country way more than new country, but like the pedal string guitar is just like 
like sliding guitar pedal string it, the the sounds it makes blows my mind because like it doesn't sound like it's a guitar it just sounds like its own thing i love the sound i think it. a lot so of I'm glad it was incorporated and also uh, something that i that um i can see in this album pedal steel and... i'm sorry pedal steel so. oh is that okay yeah um a lot of the things in this album, I, I think, go back to country music at least a little bit because, um, at least old country music, um, because a lot of the songs tell stories. And, yeah, you know, old country generally tells stories. I mean, there are a lot of country artists nowadays who are starting to go back to that, which I'm really happy. You know, Chris Stapleton, um, there's one person from the Ozarks who's uh, getting a lot of um, popularity right now. I can't remember his name. I think his name starts with, I think his first name is like Nick. Oh, God, I can't remember his name. But he's really yeah. good. Um, maybe we should do an episode on him at some point. I think he's great. Yeah. Um, Something country for sure. I'm going to be down. Yeah, I, and I have a lot. I will not discuss this here. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, it's sort of coming back. But this... Um, a lot of this sounded like that. Like when you look back, it sounds like someone, like they they had some influences on old country. Like the a lot of old country music kind of had influence on them. And when I say like I'm not a country um, fan, it's been like I'm very like pop and rock oriented. But like mm -hmm. it definitely like new country. I'm not as big a fan of, but I definitely respect and like some old country, like Glenn Campbell. Or I just found a song by George Jones called "The Grand Tour," which I think is great. But like just that. The classic sound, the classic sound of country, like that my grandparents listened to, like I think they captured it really well, even if it was just like a one-off thing. Yeah, it was. It was really kind of nice and simple. Um, sounded like a really basic sort of old country song, uh, but um, minus the accent, I, I don't think they attempted an accent at maybe all. Like, maybe like a slight thing, but like it wasn't like too hokey even yeah it wasn't it wasn't um, treated like a joke like it was like it was given yeah. enough serious approach to work it was yeah it was it was nice and like kind of fun you know the person saying you know um talking about um how they the 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 person they they were in love with you know they they hung up the last time they talked she hung up the phone on him but now she he's hung up on her um yeah it's, like, it's very cute. it's a very simple it's nice. <laughs> cute line but like, i think mean, it's just i guess played clever it's just like it feels like i'm in a country bar or saloon like just yeah i think country music also definitely captures um, malaise and depression really well so like it does <laughs> not 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 a, not, a, not, a, not not malaise maybe not malaise I just I don't know I look up the definition to be sure <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the right word but it they, captures a, like a, a longing and a de like a sort longing, of depression feeling. getting drunk yeah um, but like in a happy way <laughs> it's like the pedal still like, makes it very engaging and like it's just like I don't know like just like I don't know I can't I keep saying saloon it's just like it just feels very of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very 50s, 60s. It does. It does. Um, yeah. I, I, I think this is a, pre a pretty good piece. I think um, that, I don't know, they deserve a lot of credit for this one. I think for sure. it's kind of a, I don't know how much out of their comfort zone they're, they really got out on this because it doesn't seem like they did very much country music. I mean, just by, I, I did, I did accidentally hear um, s somewhat from their other albums. Uh, I haven't heard know, so much like, from their first two albums yet, but I feel like this is the first time they actually like went for it. Like, it was a good attempt. I think yeah. I thought it was good. They that did was pretty really, good. They did really well. Uh, I don't know. Like, do you have any critiques for this? I, I, I don't know if I have really any like, things I, I i think this song could have done more um, i mean honestly we've talked about this like beforehand like hung up on you is track 11 there's 17 total tracks like 
re-listening, like, there's not really any big problems with any of the songs up to this one. Like, yeah, no better yeah. place or little red yeah. light. I guess they're not like ones I turn on all the time. Even Haley's Waitress mm-hmm. as well. Like, they're not all like I listen to these every day, but like, they're all really well made, and they like very well written. Like, there's really no problems with any of them on real listen going back through. The I mean, really, like, you know, there's nothing. I don't. I don't know if you thought of anything, but like, really, I just think the song is really fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, th- I thought it was pretty fun. I, that's probably a good way to summarize that song. It's pr- just really like a fun song. Which is like <laughs> doing 11 songs and they're all like close to like 9 or 10 out of 10. That's really impressive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only, only real issue, I think, is it segues really nicely into like the last one we're talking about. It's just like after this song, it- it's like it. For- not necessarily falls off. It's just like I don't really care about much of the songs up to the end. Like it kind of stops it's somewhat, here. It's somewhat like dies. <laughs> not like not necessarily it's dies. It's just bad. like there's five more tracks, six if you count the bonus track. There's like Fire Island, which is like just when the parents go away. I guess kind of like Lord, not like Lord of the Flies in the dark sense, just like kids all to themselves like when jimmy neutron the movie when they all the parents leave and they have fun for a while mm-hmm. that period we're on they, fire island now aren't we yes but i'm talking about like before they get depressed and build spaceships and go find their parents again just yeah. like but like peace and love which is really basic just about peace and love i guess peace and love that's all i'm thinking of baby like it feels like it signifies like the seventies really well, like Grateful Dead. Just uh, I don't know, it just sounds time like they, period. they listen to like yeah. It also kind of sounds like they just I don't know. It didn't sound like necessarily like a Beatles album or a Beatles song, but like this the one song in this whole thing that sounds a lot like a not a lot, but like has some similarities to some Beatles songs in their psychedelic area would have to be. Um, we're just kind of breezing through this next part of the album, but yeah. like, um, super collider or was it, was that what it was called? Yeah. Okay. So the next four super, tracks. Yeah. That's, that's like track number 15. Would, tra- track number 15, super collider. Kind of reminded me of a Beatles, a Beatles song. Um, but also kind of reminded me of, I, I ended up, I don't think this one was as bad or as mediocre as we really, when we when I first talked about it, because I listened to it again yeah. before um, getting on this call, I, I, there was some there's a lot of things in this this song specifically that um, the album has some, like really good bass playing, um, but this part I, I think from I really I really liked the bass playing in this song the the bass part, and um, I I really, really like what they did with the guitar work. Uh, it's another one of the songs where it kind of reminded me of, um, 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 was that was it my bloody my bloody Valentine? Yeah. That, that yeah. You mentioned the my bloody voice. Valentine. Yeah. Um, this is another one of those songs. Um, they like play around with uh, the guitar and they make it like go in reverse. You know, they yeah. they play a guitar track in reverse. It sounds really good. Um. There's a lot more there than I, than I first thought. I mean, the next four Lyrically, after... Lyrically, it wasn't as interesting as a lot of the other ones, but yeah. um, I thought that instrumentally, I thought it was really competent. I thought it was really good. I thought, I thought Super Collider was actually a good gem on that second part that I thought wasn't as good before. I mean, yeah, like... There are definitely good parts. As I said, Fire Island and Peace and Love right after Hung Up on You are just, they're very, not really meh, just like, I don't, I'm not as engaged in the story. Bought for a Song was before Super Collider, and I think, I don't know, that kind of seems like, it's interesting to me just because it takes on, like, I guess the life of a touring artist, just like living in this mm. haze, going from place to place, and the course, like, down in the valley, we crawl in the alley, who knew the 101 was so long? 
I'm not sure what that means per se, but like before you get sold, you get bought for a song, I guess. It's just like, they're not like selling out, but they're like making do with their touring. And it's mm, just like, yeah. eventually it just blends into each other. So that kind of, so that's interesting lyrically. And then Super Collider just feels like, just like, growing up and also just taking acid or whatever just your mind expanding feeling like everything is just magic around you i guess mm-hmm. definitely like very psychedelic beetles so we bought for sign and super color are definitely better than the previous two but like just the last few of these songs definitely take a dip as you said before compared yeah. to, to everything else and then yeah elevator up's the very last song you touch on that it shouldn't first. be the last song. Yeah, it's just a bonus song about partying and your dick getting hard, I guess. <laughs> That's what it says on yeah. Genius. I'm not just being a dick. <laughs> like, it's just like, God. like de- living a life and night of debauchery and just like, I don't want to come down, but like, eventually I will. And it's like, I'm going to be in my back of my mind, but like, now I'm going to pay for it, go to bed, and pay for the consequences later. Just, you know. It's just like a night of party, not a tour. You know? Yeah. Um, when your dick's I hard. Not, you you know. I didn't even get that when I first heard this. I, I didn't, didn't either. Like, look, I can tell you I focus way more on instrumentation, even though I'm not even like, I'm a singer. But yeah, <laughs> we're both singers. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're both singers. Uh, yeah, we are. Um, but for some reason, I just love to focus on like, how things are set up instrumentally yeah. and overarching themes and stuff. <sighs> this song was just kind of elevator up should not be the ending ending song of the album. I, I it was a, it's a bonus, but like if it's a bonus, I don't know. I just don't think they should have added it. Um, I thought that um, the original last song, God, what was it called? Um, uh, Yours and mine. Yours and mine. It connects back to Mexican wine really well, lyrically. Yeah, I noticed that today, as I said, like mm-hmm. uh, Mexican. Yeah, I'll load it up. Like the the first years in mind is like a minute long, which obviously is very short. Like you didn't, I didn't expect after so much grandiosity of the album that it just ends on a minute long song. But the lyrics is just like I'll read them very quickly, just because it's like very short, but like. In about an hour, the sunlight's going to fade and you and me will divvy up the wine. Like everything else here, yours and mine. Picking up the paper, coffee's been made, it's book review and face the nation time. Two in the same mind, yours and mine. It's a, it's, it's a nice little ditty. And I noticed like, I was reading the lyrics again just to prepare and it's like the, uh, the chorus of Mexican wine is the sun still shines in the summertime. I'll be yours if you'll be mine. I tried to change, but I changed my mind. He found another glass of Mexican wine. So very similar. Just that song is just like accepting life as it is and letting it hit you how it does. And just like, I guess yours and mine is kind of similar, just appreciating what you have and what you got. And just like, I don't know, like they're, I don't think it's like they're dying or like anything dark like that. It's just like end of the day, end of an era, just we have each other mm. so it's also kind of like yours and mine is kind of like him and like girlfriend boyfriend whatever but also like yours and mine is just like him and the audience mm. it's like readjusting back to normal life after the album's over it's not you have the main focus anymore and just sharing what you got to share together it ties up it kind of ties the album nicely like like a like a nice little yeah nice little bow on the album like it's like, not the same meaning but like it it uses the same kind of phrasing and it's, mm-hmm. it's a nice way it's a nice way to go back i didn't now i kind of i'm glad it's a minute long it's just like it feels like it more for that it has more of a purpose it makes me upset that elevator up is the last song on the album <laughs> i mean if we bought because the cd it wouldn't be i'd say yeah I, I guess if you bought the cd but it's like the way it's on spotify it just makes me very upset because it's like ah you could have ended it so <laughs> so much better and then you just add elevator up it's like this this and i don't want to ever come down <laughs> yeah it's just like little that's really, provo- really provocative song. 
it's sure. it's no offense to elevate the song elevator up but it's just it's very much like a hokey hokey rock song it's like um it's kind of it's kind of similar to the debate we were having yesterday where it's like uh we both have fondness of the beatles and like let it be is one of those favorite beatles albums not the favorite and like don't let me down was written around that era and it wasn't included on the album it's one of the, i think the best and one of the best beatles songs and it's like it was just a b-side to get back for a while which is a paul mccartney song which like i love paul mccartney i love john lennon's writing as well it's just like it's similar here like yours and mine similar to don't let me down is a better song but it's either followed up by a either mess song or put in the back to like a just an okay fun song it's not like i don't know you know <laughs> yeah like it, yeah it's just like i don't know it's just yeah. it's like they the by putting elevator up at the end of the song on on the way it is on spotify it's just kind of like it doesn't ruin everything. It just, it doesn't make things as um, cohesive. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't, it, 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 it kind of ruins that nice ending. <laughs> ears and mine, Mex- ears and mine and Mexican wine definitely thread into each other. Cause also the course of Mexican wine is also like, just could also be, if we're comparing it to yours and mine, just like sitting back and let life happen and let this album take you over. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, we've reached the end of the track list overall. I mean, as I said, I think it's a great album, save for, like, some songs. But, like, I'm sad it didn't get enough attention outside of just Stacy's mom. Yeah, it's a no, great album. I think, I think it makes I – mean, okay, so they wrote music up until 2011. I yeah, don't know how much of it. 2011. Um, I don't know how much, how much of a fall. I mean, they obviously had some sort of a falling, but like, I really feel like the album should have gotten way more attention than it seemed like it did. Yeah. Because it's like, there are a lot of like great, you know, pieces of work on this song. And I don't know, but I feel it was all almost as if like Stacy's mom sort of ruined that a little bit. I mean, I don't know if it ruined it, but like, kind of that that the fame like the fame it got kind of ruins the image of them because they they really Stacey's mom does not reflect them as a band it seems if if you listen to this album at least it doesn't really reflect them um yeah I was was gonna say like whatever it's it's really frustrating because it's like ah I was I don't know I was frustrated with myself because I heard this and it's just like shit I missed this um I really thought that Stacy's like the people who wrote Stacy's mom and I hate to say this but like when I heard that when I heard Stacy's mom I thought that they were just kind of like uh they seem kind of one act they seem kind of like. And I know you can't really just turn that through a song, but like Stacy's mom is such a wacky song that you you would think that. And I think I really do think that it kind of ruined it for them a little bit. And I think that that happens yeah. for a lot of people in terms of one hit wonders. I mean, I think it's the beauty of not like we're like taking a bullet and we're heroes for doing this. It's just like. I think just it's, I was definitely caught off guard by how good the album was. Outside of Stacey's Mom, I do genuinely love that song. It's one of my favorite songs, but like, yeah, it shows like, I mean, there's not really, they change up styles a lot. So it's not like one song can really represent them, but also Stacey's Mom, it's just like, it was just kind of another song, kind of another joke. They didn't expect it to become a success, and it did. So then it's just, that's kind of the blessing and the curse. You get success, and people kind of know who you are, but then, if you if all your success is kind of pinned on one song, it's like some people might not even know who the band is. They just know what the song is, and then also like I don't know, like you're famous, but in a way also not. And I think I would love to give more attention to albums that deserve it, like this. It's like, yeah, it's yeah, a, it's yeah, a lot yeah. To offer. 
Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. I think, um, I think that um, people should definitely go back and look at, check out this album. Um, you know, the, 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 the six viewers we have that, that have gone through this the six, whole time. Six is a little generous. It is generous. Um, I don't think my mom would watch this all. Two, um, two, maybe. Okay. Yeah, two, anyway. you and me. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever gets through all this, you know, if, if, if you do definitely check out this album it's great um, also check it out if, even if you made it to like 20 minutes yeah you'll find something you, you like you will i i do think there are like songs for for like most people on this album because it's 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 really it's it has a lot of variation in and how um different songs are are written but also it just feels really nice and polished so, yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Check out Welcome Interstate Managers by Founds of Wayne. But also, that concludes our first Albite Long episode of the MNN show. We'll be trying out a lot of different formats starting out. We got a lot of ideas and we'd love to keep doing this. Hopefully, people like it. But yeah, we'll do more one hit wonders soon. We'll tackle first and worst of popular bands, first album, worst album by a band, and then interviews, songs, whatever. I'm like, you got nothing to lose, baby. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, thank, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, <laughs> thank thanks, <you. laughs> th thanks for, um, yeah, thanks for checking this out. Um, I have a lot of respect for you if you if you if you stay through this whole thing. Um, um yeah uh check us yeah. out in the future we got a lot of stuff planned uh you know we we got some we'd like to do some a lot of different things in terms of like getting some artists on here um whatever you know if anybody's watching this who's in the springfield area or st louis area maybe hit us up because you yeah. know well, it. although although we're just starting out, we're looking to try to like spotlight, like you know, p artists within Springfield or, um, you know, he's in St. Louis. You know, we could do that. So, yeah, we're looking to do all kinds of stuff. You know, do interviews and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Obviously, I'm glad we have Zoom. We can do it in a time like this. Um, I, hopefully, I plan like I live in Springfield usually. So like, once we're back to the nitty gritty the normalcy of it all we'll try to do some of these in person and bring more people on just to have a party with it yeah hell yeah uh, yeah hell yeah all right <laughs> well that, that concludes this thank you and uh good night noah i love you i love you, I love you too <laughs> <laughs>